Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Hannah and I make weekly videos about my candle making journey and any tips and tricks on how to make candles at home. So in today's video, I thought I would do a, another requested video, which is how to choose the right wick for your candle and how to know what size to go for. So this is something that I actually struggled with at the very start of my candle making journey. I think once you have your candle jar figured out, choosing a wick for it can be such a mystery. There just seems to be so many wicks out there and picking the right one or at least the right series of wicks for your candle jar um, is just obviously gonna save you so much, so much money and so much less time experimenting. So my first tip would be to pick your candle jar and wherever you have got your candle jar, whichever candle supplier, go on the website and go onto the product page and see what wick recommendation your candle supplier is giving you. So for example, I purchased my 150 gram amber jars from Candle Shack and it was advised that the CL series wicks uh, were the most appropriate for this candle jar. So that gave me a starting point to know at least what series of wicks, the CL wicks, um, I should start with. And then from there, I then started joining loads of forums and groups on Facebook. Um, and I just asked around. I put a question out there saying, does anybody have the 150 gram amber jars from Candle Shack? If you do, what wax do you use? First of all, that is really important. And secondly, what wick works with that wax? And obviously that gave me so much more insight. And a lot of people recommended that for this jar, the CL6 wick was really great for them. So that gave me that first starting point. I started with the CL6 wick and luckily touch wood, it appears to be the most successful wick that I have used for this candle. Um, but either way, I wanted to go from there and still test to see if perhaps a larger wick would be even better. Maybe it would give me a stronger hot scent throw, despite this one giving me a really good hot scent throw. Um, whether I would get a better melt pool or whatnot. So that would be my first first tip to go with. My second tip would be if the flame on your wick is more than an inch high then it just simply means your wick is too large for your candle jar and therefore you need to downsize because it is just going to be a fire hazard for your candle jar and just a really unsafe candle anyway. As well, you'll probably experience a lot of flickering of the flame. Number three, if you are experiencing black soot, then it simply means again that your candle wick is too large. Um, it's just not burning correctly. There absolutely should be no black soot on your candles. Thankfully, it's not something I have experienced with these um, candles that I've made myself, but it has been something I've experienced a lot with shop-bought candles. Um, and yeah, your, can your wick is just too large for your candle. Number four, if your wick is too small, then after three to four hours, depending on the size of your candle jar, you simply won't reach full melt pool and it would just still be kind of hanging on in there and you'll probably just be stressing out out thinking why isn't it reaching full melt pool because by the three hour four hour mark again depending on the size of your jar you absolutely should be at full melt pool um, so yeah if you haven't by that time then it just means that your wick is too small and you should try sizing up to see if that helps number five um, is probably one of the most important ones if you are doing everything right in your wax calculations when you are actually making your candle and you are not experiencing a good hot scent throw, then it could actually be your wick. So you may want to try sizing up or sizing down even. A lot of people think that when they have a poor hot scent throw that they just need to size up, but it can actually be 
the complete opposite so sizing down can actually help make your candle perform better and number six which i've kind of really touched upon is if you are experiencing a lot of flickering and dancing of the flame in your candle then it could be that it is too large a lot of people seem to worry about when their candle gets to when they're uh wick kind of gets to this point in their jar and when it starts flickering a lot then and I don't necessarily think that means you should be worrying when you see a lot of flickering at this point in your jar it just means that as the um, flame is getting lower in your jar it's obviously just not getting enough oxygen than it did at the top of your candle and because this is a small jar um, I am absolutely going to see more flickering around this point because it's just there's just not getting enough oxygen into that point and also the environment you need to check the environment that you're in so if you've got any drafts or then that is absolutely going to affect the flickering and dancing of your flame too so that is something to bear in mind um, if you have too much flickering and dancing of the flame then try wicking it down I know some people have actually solve that issue from um, size, going a size up in their wick but then they experience problems such as the candles burning too quickly and they're getting the full melt pool within the hour so um, I would try both to be honest um, if I was if I was personally if I was personally experiencing a lot of dancing of the flame that was I wasn't happy with then I would try both wicking up and wicking down and seeing which one of those two performs the best. And I think those are the main tips when it comes to choosing the right wick for your candle. But my biggest, biggest, biggest tip ever would be what I recommended right at the start of this video. And that would be to contact your uh, candle supplier if they haven't provided the information already on the website um, and just ask what wick is going to work best with your candle. Absolutely, the candle supplier who have sold you your candle jar should know that information. Um, and then join the groups and the forums on Facebook and just go out there and ask them. If you have previously purchased your candle jar from Candle Shack, for example, like me, then they have a Candle Shack Facebook group um, on Facebook. <laughs> um, so it's really helpful to ask the community on there. And of course, there are a lot of people with the jar who have purchased this jar. Um, so they know a lot about this. And again, that is how I knew that the CL6 wick for this candle jar worked really, really well. Um, and I have experimented with wicking up. Um, and currently where I am in my candle making journey is the CL10 wick is burning too quickly. It's giving me a full melt pool within or just over an hour. Um, and the hot scent throat isn't as good as the CL6. So it is really informative when you um, experiment with different wicks. Like if you have a perfect wick that you have only tested a few times and you're really confident that you should just stick with that wick, I would say to keep experimenting. The process of finding the perfect candle before you go on and sell your candles is so important um, that you keep experimenting despite thinking that you have found the perfect wick for your candle. Again, like I said, I thought the CL6 wick was perfect. And as much as I would have loved to have just stopped there and be like, I've got it. It only took me a few months. I have still carried on testing. So I've tested going a wick larger. That doesn't seem to work for me. So I think now I'm going to test the CL4 wick. Again, that's been recommended on Candle Shack community and see where that goes. It may give me a really poor melt pool because it's smaller or it may give me a really stronger hot scent throw. I don't know. I need to experiment with it. But I hope you guys found this video somewhat helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for weekly videos. I will catch you guys next week. Bye.